Deep in the remote, dense swamps of Africa lives an unusual bird with a shoe for a face. The shoebill stork looks more like something out of a fantasy novel. This rare bird might very well have walked out of the dinosaur era, just as it is. Hi everyone, welcome to Animal Educate. My name's Abby and today we're going to be looking at the shoebill stork. In captivity, the shoebill stork has been known to display similar behaviour to the hippogriff from Harry Potter, the mythical creature. Isn't he beautiful? Say hello to Buckbeak. Hagrid, exactly what is that? That run is a hippogriff. The eagle horse hybrid is described to be quite proud, it's flesh eating, but it's also quite a noble, sensitive character. In order to approach the hippogriff, you have to bow. And actually, we've seen something similar in captive shoebill stork. In Uganda, there's a captive shoebill stork named Sushi, and you have to bow in order to make his acquaintance and if you don't, you'll find he'll get really put out by this and he'll either walk away or fly off. The shoebill has a couple of different names actually, but it's most commonly known as the shoebill. It's also known as the whale-headed stork, but it's a single species and it constitutes one family. They share traits with storks and herons. They have the long necks and the long legs, which is characteristic of wading birds but their closest relative is the pelican. Shoebills stand at about three to four feet tall. They're entirely gray with broad wings and long legs. The head is large in proportion to the body and the eyes are also exceptionally large. The species is named for its clog-shaped bill and this is an adaptation for catching and holding onto slippery lungfish. The bill serves many purposes. It's a handy container, so it can hold lots of prey. Also, it can hold water, so it can douse either eggs or chicks later on. The bill also has really sharp edges, so this helps to decapitate the prey. It also helps to separate the vegetation which has been collected along with the fish. Shoebills are large bodied and they're very sturdy animals. A soothing combination of blue-grey, dark-grey and a slate colour make up most of the plumage. They have soft doe-like eyes and they're known for their piercing stare, which can actually be quite scary. They can lift off near vertically. Their wings are well suited to soaring. They have an eight-foot wingspan. Like herons and pelicans, the shoebill will fly with its head held back against the body. The long legs and the long toes help it across the marshy, sodden habitats. Although they don't make much sound, they do during greetings or during nesting. They make a sound called bill clattering. This is where they clap the mandibles of their bills together, which creates a loud, hollow sound. The shoebill is endemic to the wetlands and the swamps of Central and East Africa. They inhabit swampy regions in and around the White Nile area of northeastern Africa. They stake out overspill areas where the water is moving slowly past towards lakes, carrying with it lots of fish. In Uganda, they're found along marshy edges of lakes, in areas grown over with weeds and grasses. This is great for cover and nest material. They're distributed across Uganda, Rwanda, Western Tunisia, and Zambia. While it might perch or roost in trees, it spends most of its time, or a great deal of its time, in or near water. You'll find that the shoebill spends most of its time motionless. It tends to be slow moving, apart from when it's collapsing on its prey at lightning speed. Shoebills are diurnal, which means they hunt in the day. They do hunt at night, but only if the light's strong enough, so if there's strong moonlight. 
Shoebills are stand and wait or wade and walk slowly hunters. They hold their bill vertically downward, out of the way of its binocular vision. When a food item is spotted, they'll jerk their head forward, lurching into the water to engulf the fish with its bill. Their fishing technique is called collapsing, which isn't really effective in deep water, which is why they stick to the shallows. Water with low oxygen content means that the fish are going to be surfacing more. These are obviously going to be more favoured hangouts. Lungfish and catfish are common food items, as well as water snakes, frogs, monitor lizards and young turtles. Less common are young water birds and crocodiles. Shoebills nest atop floating vegetation and collect plant material from surrounding areas to construct their nest. They tend to use deeper areas of swamps tucked into tall, dense vegetation away from disturbances. Shoebills lay one to three eggs, usually two, at intervals of up to five days apart. Both parents share in the 30-day incubation duties. Chicks are covered in thick, silvery grey down and already have a wide gape but the bill won't start to bulge for about another month. Fledging occurs at around 95 days of age. They're independent at about 125 days. Shoebills reach maturity at three to four years old. Breeding pairs are usually monogamous. These birds are very solitary in nature though, and even mating pairs will feed at opposite ends of their territory. The IUCN has estimated there's around 3,300 to 5,300 adult shoebills left in the wild and the population is still going down. As lands are created for pasture, habitat loss is a major threat, plus cows trample on their nests. Agricultural burning and pollution from the oil industry also impact their habitats. They're also hunted for food in some places and because they're considered a bad omen. Whatever. If you want to learn more about how you can help these majestic, amazing birds, there's so much that you can actually do. First thing you can do is learn about them. Learn about the conservation and about what people are doing to protect them. You can donate to these charities and organizations. Also, you can lower your carbon footprint. Spread the word and raise awareness of these animals. Most people don't even know they exist. Share content across your social media platforms and raise awareness. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed learning about the shoe bill as much as I have. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel and help us grow. Also, if you have any questions about the shoe bill, comment below and like the video if you've enjoyed it. Until next time.